What's the crack everyone? It's Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and Head Instructor of Kern School of Combat. So uh, I've had a few different questions uh, from people recently obviously wanting to share the material about Irish stick fighting and instructional material and all that sort of stuff. Um, there are various different reasons I don't do that but I do want to share um, more of the ideas behind the things that I do and the hows and whys of things. Um, so this video is one that I want to touch on for the how and why of the style of sparring that we do. Now, um, like I've mentioned to others, and if you saw my previous video, um, you'll see some of the sparring that we do. Um, we, my group is a, uh, affiliated to the Dog Brothers, and we kind of use that sparring style. There's a multitude of reasons as to why we do that, um, but I just kind of want to discuss some of the um, important um, things that we find, and especially from people who do weapon arts uh, with various styles of sparring. So I know a good number of the people who watch my channel practice HEMA. Um, for those who don't know, those are histor historical European martial arts. Now, that's a huge umbrella term that includes longsword fencing, uh, Irish stick fighting, um, staff fighting, rapier, dagger, all sorts of different things. So to narrow that down, um, a lot of people come from various fencing arts, longsword uh, being probably one of the most uh, popular. And a lot of the members of my group um, are fencers. Um, they have a background in various different sword arts. And even some of the guys who have started with me um, have then dabbled in some or have come from other backgrounds. I have one practitioner who uh, comes from a kendo background and various other backgrounds. So one of the things that takes a bit of getting used to and is an important consideration um, when we talk about sparring and stick fighting is not stopping after a uh, blow is landed. Now this is a fairly important concept for a multitude of reasons. Um, the number one being that at the end of the day this is a stick. Um, it's not a sword, it's not a lightsaber, um, it's not a gun, it's a stick. Now as you might have seen in my testing video, obviously these can do a serious amount of damage, but that only really happens if you hit them well and in a specific area. And that really dramatically changes when we miss with uh, the Merlin or the, the this, you know, knobbly end of our shillelagh. If we were to just hit someone with the other end of the stick or perhaps even the back of it, um, you won't necessarily get the same sort of impact because well, it's basic physics. If you have a rounded surface, it'll concentrate on a point, and obviously a point you know, concentrates the force, and you have more damage. The thing is, like I said, if you hit anywhere else, you have no guarantee that that's going to do any significant damage. And even if you do hit, um, let's say, to the top of the head with a stick, you don't really have any guarantee that that will hit perfectly, that it might not glance off, that that blow might not be um, a fight ender as such. Now obviously we don't spar with these, as uh, you've seen my videos, we spar with uh, rattan. Um, even though the weight is comparable to these, rattan is a very different material, um, it flexes, it has give, it's much safer material to spar with. However, it is still a um, hard material and it does very much hurt to get hit with. Um, as I can attest to the various bumps and bruises I've gotten over the years. Um, and it is a hard substance. These aren't padded sticks, they're hard sticks that we spar with. So what I'm talking about here is that when you um, fence, more often than not, it is a solid blow and that's it. And you stop, you reset, or um, you know, points awarded, whatever it might be. And that makes total sense when we talk about a blade, because if I have a blade like this, even though this isn't a particularly, you know, isn't a sword or anything like this, but if I were to say, land a solid blow to the head, um, you're fairly likely for the edge of a blade to cut into the head and do a serious amount of damage. Or as we see in various different manuals, um, you know, if you raise up a hand, you know, a sword might go clean through it. Um, and I'll bring up some examples on screen of various different manuals that show these sort of things. And also another thing that happens with a stick more often than not is you get uh, double blows. And then this is the same thing I know in HEMA where in the fencing arts, is that you get two people landing a blow at the same time. Now, with that sort of thing, with a uh, bladed weapon, again, as, as you'll see, that 
usually results in a pretty severe injury or potentially even death for both parties. With a stick, however, that's not really guaranteed. Um, and as you'll see, even in some uh, later um, manuals, such as like single stick, um, you'll see people um, often pairing with a hand. I mean, you do see the same thing in um, various different fencing manuals. But even when we look at an art like single stick, um, it's eventually forbidden to keep the arm raised. So it's either tucked behind the back or sometimes even like tied off or you hold a piece of cloth um, tied to your leg or around the waist to basically stop the hand coming up and just protecting the head the entire time. Now, this takes a lot of getting used to uh, when you come from a background where, um, you know, it is spar and stop. And as a result, it often leads to very interesting exchanges, as you would see um, in my sparring videos. Perhaps one of the biggest ones is um, the reliance on grappling. Now, uh, I think that's a, a big video um, in its own right. And I think if anyone has any interest in seeing a video, you know, about grappling um, with relation to stick fighting and kind of my philosophy on it, um, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to do it. But I just want to touch on the importance with stick fighting, especially of not necessarily doing a um, stop and go style of sparring. Now I know for other different arts that is uh, very justified. Um, and I know even for some people, you might like to use that rule system, but personally for myself and my school, we don't use that. Um, like I said, the main reason being with a stick, you cannot guarantee a, an immediate fight ender. Um, and the things that you might expect to end a fight uh, might not necessarily be the ones that do. For example, um, often you'll hurt someone most significantly with their hands. Um, you know, if you target someone's hands, it's very difficult to continue holding a stick. I know various different arts have different terms for this and different concepts around it, but it's something when you do stick fighting or even various types of fencing that you will see it happens to you a lot, especially if someone's actively targeting your hands. Whereas, you know, the head and the body can often move or get out of the way. Now, obviously with ourselves, we wear fencing masks to protect our faces. And obviously that creates a, a unique set of um, things to consider. Obviously we have a layer of protection there. Um, you know, we would be silly to not wear something like that, but obviously, you know, there's certain things that you need to accept um, for your own safety. And obviously they impact how you fight and spar as a result. Um, but again, that's a video for another subject. So kind of the long and short of the video is that when you start uh, sparring with six, and one of the things that is, in my imp uh, opinion, um, important to practice is um, not stopping immediately. And um, when you land a solid blow is to continue. Um, and you, uh, more often than not, capitalize on that. It's very easy to get to the habit of hit, stop, hit, stop. But with stick fighting, um, often, you can't guarantee necessarily a perfect strike and certain things will be um, somewhat safe or possible to do. Uh, a classic one that happens a lot. Now, you know, I wouldn't recommend people do it, but often you'll see people blocking with the forearms or reaching their hand out. You see this in very different manuals. Often these lead to people binding up the arm and uh, wrapping up the stick, all different things like that. Um, or just hoping that the stick will glance off and close in, various different things like that. But, with a stick, that's much safer than, you know, if I was to reach out and just take a sword blow to the arm, that's not really going to end well for me. I can kind of get away with it with, with a stick, and especially if it was a you know, self-defense or, you know, a more serious uh, scenario, you might be something you're willing to do in order to keep yourself safe. So if you guys want to see uh, more videos on these sort of topics, do let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to do them. Um, and if you want to support the channel, you will find my uh, Patreon in the description. And of course, if you would like to attend any of my classes, um, you will also find uh, links to my um, classes in the description. So once again, a huge thank you to everyone for all of your support and for watching the channel. Like I said, if you have any questions on any of this stuff or if there's any future videos you would like to see, do let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to do them. Once again, thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And so on.